Yeah, that's what got me the door. Awesome. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Manchester Film Festival. We're here to talk about short session five and Big Cat. Please tell me about the film and your role within it. Uh, thanks, my name's Mike, um, I'm the director, the writer of the film. It's my first uh, short film that I've directed um, and it's about a young guy, played by Callum, uh, who lives in a rural town in Gloucestershire and is sort of struggling to uh, find any excitement really from where he lives and so he attempts to impose excitement onto his onto his town onto the place that he lives the area using a, a tiger <laughs> with, with mixed results <laughs> yeah. i'm callum woodhouse those are my knees um yeah i've known mike for a long time now um i've always wanted to work with him after having read a lot of his work previously and then yeah this one this one just sort of came about quite organically really didn't it um yeah yeah, I got to come to Cheltenham, which I'd never been to before, and spend a couple of days there. And most importantly, my do my dog is in this film. <laughs> Actually, both of our dogs. Are both, in of the our film. dogs yeah. both of our dogs. Both of our dogs are in this film. Yeah. That's the most important piece and of information. They both absolutely smash it. Yeah, well. they're really yeah. good. They out act. They out act me. They out act me completely. Yeah, they out act me completely. But I'm 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 comfortable enough to say that. So, I mean, it's a fantastic performance. I, that was a later question, but sure, let's go on to it. Like, I really enjoy how much of the story is told just in the eyes and the expressions. Yeah. How much of that was on page and how much of that was, like, not improvised, but rehearsed? Well, sort of all of it, really, because there was no, there was no written dialogue for, for Warren, um, which, yeah, at first was really daunting. Um, but then you just sort of go, anything that, anything, that's, anything that sort of gets your heart racing a bit as an actor is something that you should definitely dive head first into um, I don't know if that was always a thing that you were never that he was never going to speak for the shot yeah I don't, I don't really ever like remember sort of deciding to write it like that I sort of got to the end of the shot and was like oh <laughs> he's actually not said anything or I think I think you I, get I, cheaper that way right <laughs> yeah no, no idea. Uh, but I think I think I got actually I think the truth is I got to the end of the script and he had like one line and I was like well there's no point doing that and like there, there was obviously a reason why that happened and so then we just rolled with it a bit more yeah. but yeah you're right that a lot of the a lot of the story and like the kind of depth of the character like whilst it is a comedy like you know you kind of there needs to be something else there about like the kind of sadness of that character and uh and Callum, I think, is really, really, really good at that. Like, you know, can do very, very, very little, but it's one of those sort of transparent actors where you can see what's going on behind, behind the eyes. So, um, good casting, I think. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> um, I, like, I think anyone in this modern world really struggles with attention span, and, like, I love cinema because it's one of the few places where you can go, and it's just like, be patient, here's some tension. And I love it, even after you get what the joke's going to be, that he goes back, he has another egg. <laughs> there's a whole like extra bits that like in there's so much it's so expensive to have unnecessary real estate in film and especially short because it's normally all your own money like how difficult was it to commit to that bit and not be like you know what we're gonna have an earlier joke to tell people it's a comedy how difficult was it to what how to, to like have faith in all that slow storytelling building to such a not a delayed punchline but like a very worthy punchline rather than being like joke 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 so here's a comedy and then later on because it was all build up right yeah like I said I didn't really want it to just be an out and out comedy like it felt like by the time that we had kind of landed on what the joke was or like what the prank was that he was pulling it felt like at the end of the second act and it felt like they needed like the, 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 the primary like enemy if you like in the film is his mother and there needs to be some resolution between the ten the whole setup is that she goes go and enjoy the weekend and he can't do it so <laughs> yeah. she she instigates like, the whole thing and so in spite of her almost. yeah yeah <laughs> so you need you need those the clash of the enemies really at, 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 at the end and so that's what the second egg bit from that is 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 building up to so um so yeah, it was, that was. In fact, if anything, we took a load of stuff out of it, <laughs> um, rather than rather than feeling nervous to add in. No, yeah. Cool. Um, one of the things I really enjoyed about it, and enjoy about film festivals and this kind of experience, anyways, is that you get to see actual British filmmaking, and like how few films or pieces of media do you see that feature a car boot. <laughs> yeah, I was literally just about to mention the car boot because that was that was like the happiest accident of all time. It was right? amazing. 
It was amazing. So that was just happening. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't well, work. we knew well, it was going to be going oh, on. Oh right, we, okay. didn't, we didn't just drive around. Oh right, and okay. Car no, but, but but it was a, it was a really good. It was a really it was good, a really car good turnout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of the better ones I've been. Well, because yeah. it, it was roasting. It was like a forty degree day, and I think you can see it. It was that summer where all the grass it looked like it looks like South Africa or yeah, something. Yeah, it there, is. It's yeah, like, like it's like it's almost like hay basically, and there's bright blue sky and this like basically this kind of color. Um, but yeah, honestly, we got so much footage from that car boot and so much great audio of actual conversations that were going on. And actually, that's what we had to cut a lot of because there were some amazing, amazing takes didn't, from didn't that. You, didn't you do like an improv with one of the guys where you were trying to like haggle him down? And <laughs> yeah, he was kind of in on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, yeah, you, you do see this guy in, in the film and it's just, selling, you know. Selling the Batmobile cars. Yeah, selling yeah. the Batmobile cars and like haggling it down to like 20p and that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But like, but you know, they're a really big part of where I'm from. Like, I, I remember that as a kid going to car boots. And oh, the thing yeah. is, nobody goes there to make any money. Money, really it's not really about that because no one nothing's worth anything you know like no one spends really it's any something money. to do before the pubs open it is yeah. kind of yeah. but, they, but there's a great like identity and I think that's a, a lot of what the film is attempting to sort of do is that the town and where he lives it's like there is this English like tradition that's rooted in a lot of these more agricultural and more rural towns which is really slow paced and is really not like interesting to anyone that's young but I think has to be sort of I want to preserve it like you know I live in London and and it's really fast paced and you come back and there's this really slow pace of life that's really alluring and and like funny as well and like I just don't want to lose it so I guess a lot of the film is the battle between a younger person trying to be modern and be exciting and but he's up against this like world of just nonsense a lot of it's nonsense you know yeah. but it's but it's English and like yeah. and speaking of nonsense I guess how difficult was it to decide on how naff the prop had to be? Like, would it have worked as well if you had a super realistic tiger? I think I did aim to have quite a realistic tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> no, I, no, no. I, I did it. I did. So I did. The, the, the woman that made it, Vicky Fonio, she's a really close friend. She's an artist, but has never made a tiger before in her life like that anyway and so I just said make me a tiger and she said can I have some creative license and I was like well yeah you're an artist like I trust you let's go and I didn't see it until literally a few days before we were filming and I'm then she sure is perfect I think yeah she's she's absolutely fucking mental isn't she let's be honest <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I did say I was like look she has to she has to have the capacity to be real in the sense of like her face obviously is not but like the fur I have to be able to hide her and move her if and you saw be it able to, through branches yeah you'd be like, yeah. maybe you could believe that that is a real tiger, you know? So I need it to do that. I need it to be a bit weird and also really funny. I think she's definitely weird and funny. So she had quite a hard job. So no, I didn't really need it to be realistic, but I needed it to, to in some moments, pass as being real. I needed the prank to like actually work. You need to work on both levels, essentially. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, a yeah. little okay. bit. My dog, my dog Ralph got, got a sight of we called the tiger Priscilla. Oh yeah, by the way, we started calling her Priscilla yeah. and no one knows what that <laughs> yeah, means. Yeah, exactly. She's not credited. Who's Priscilla? We yeah, have yeah. a film here with Guy Fierce and actually we've had a couple, so. The okay. tiger was Priscilla okay. anyway. But my, my dog saw Priscilla on one of the first days and just started barking his head off and we were like, right, Lost keep it. these two guys separate until the final day of shooting. Yeah. And then we got the, we got the best That's acting. That's how we got the best we, acting. We got, we got the best acting in the entire film just because we kept my dog and Priscilla yeah, separate until yeah. the very end. I also want to just tell a quick, a quick story about, about her. My, my, my favorite thing about Priscilla is that at the end, we were like, does anyone want her? And obviously <laughs> everyone said no. <laughs> I was like, well, I've got a small flat. Like, I can't keep this tiger here. And so we took her to the dump. And, um, and you know, it was up those, those no. dumps where you go up the steps and it's like the, the big skips. And on the skip over, there was a quite a old uh, <laughs> like Gloucester bloke. <laughs> almost, there's this old Gloucester bloke, and he's throwing away bits of scrap, and he just looks over and goes, "Oh yeah, I got one of them." <laughs> I was like, "What, one of these?" He's like, "Yeah, mine's about <laughs> 20 years old now." I was like, "Okay." Boy, he <laughs> still had his. <laughs> yeah, but like, why has he got that? Like, what does he mean? Like, as though it was like everyone's got one, and it's like uh, what, I like a it. semi-life size model tiger. Anyway, that's Gloucestershire. So awesome, yeah, no, no. You I, should no, go, no, <laughs> visit Gloucester. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we're unfortunately running out of time. Um, so we rambled on. No, it's absolutely fine. We'll talk a little bit more after the film. Um, but before you go, tell us what's next for yourselves and what's next for Big Cat. Um, I'm continuing with more series of All Creatures Great and Small. I'm about to start 
uh, work on the fifth season, uh, and I've got a, a horror film uh, coming out that I filmed in Indonesia. It's an Indonesian Japanese co production um, called Orangikan, so that sh should hopefully be out for ha Halloween this year. Um, my first feature film is coming out, I didn't direct it, I just wrote, uh, is coming out on Sky in June called Bonus Track. Uh, and then I've got another feature project um, with a company called Public Dreams. Uh, and then for Big Cat, uh, we're just uh, uh, entering it into different festivals, uh, slightly, going slightly more international, a few more that are in the, the, the States that uh, we're hoping to get into and a couple in Europe. So we'll see. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys.